Hey, I'm Aileen. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I usually make. And I just want to give you a little bit disclaimer. I originally didn't want to make this video because I didn't want to jump on the bandwagon. But at the same time, I fully support like things like whistleblowing and holding each other accountable, especially on such a large platform like YouTube. And I just wanted to add Mike's perspective to the whole Sheldon Lester you know, issue going on, conversation going on right now because I used to watch her videos all the time and the reason I decided to make this video about it is because I remembered that I recently like quoted her in one of my videos and I'm now horrified and I don't ever want to support her again because of all the things that have come up to light and I wanted to inspire other you know, people that watch her stuff to not support her as well. And like I said, I'm not going to go into that because other people have already made much better videos that I can make. So what I want to do in this video is explain why somebody would watch her content. As I watch these videos, number one, I'm asking myself, how did I not pick up on all these things? And number two, I keep hearing all these other YouTubers being like, I can't believe people watch her. How could people watch her? So I want to explain in this video why someone would watch her like from the perspective of viewer or past viewer because i don't know i no longer want to support her and also bring to the conversation an issue that um all of this brought to my attention regarding like tea channels and gossip channels but we'll get to that let's get started as to why somebody will watch her channel first of all i think the reason why people watch her channel is because she's very entertaining i mean i literally cannot think of any other youtuber that can make a 30 minute video with zero jump cuts, zero edits, zero b-roll footage on her videos and keep you completely captivated for 20 to 40 minutes sometimes depending on the topic of her choice. And number two which is what primarily kept me around, she does have her legitimate moments of giving like good life advice. She would teach you how to establish boundaries, how to like how to look at a guy and see are they capable of having a relationship are they treating you well like she does have some legitimate advice sprinkled throughout her videos and to me from day one Shalyn Lester's videos I honestly saw her as a gossip channel I didn't think of her as like a self-help person because I follow like spiritual leaders and they're never like talking about celebrities or never talking about gossip. So I kind of saw her predominantly as a gossip channel and somebody who's very entertaining and who would occasionally give you good life advice. I guess on a personal level, it was an easy way to not feel guilty about consuming celebrity gossip. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> And to be honest, when I look back at this period of time, what kept me captivated about her videos, especially the problematic ones, um, I started watching, she has a whole series on the Kardashians and how they're narcissists, they're manipulative. And the reason why I kept watching them was because I'm very interested in understanding how these people operate. Not the Kardashians, but people that are manipulative. I'm very interested interested in learning how they think so that I can protect myself from them because there's been moments in my in life that I felt like oh this person was very manipulative and it took me so long to realize like I want to understand how they think so that I can realize earlier um, ironically because <laughs> so ironic because then you know obviously Shannon Lester is completely falling into this category but I guess that's why I never took her seriously that much because to me it was like kind of like being a fly on the wall learning about the dark side of somebody's personality so that I could identify it in other people and as a way of protection it makes sense to me because I live in LA and you know the cliche of everybody's trying to be a social climber and everybody has their own agenda so I do actively try to discern who is a person that I should get close to, who is a person that they're not really given friendship without getting anything back kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense, but I guess my point is how can I identify manipulative people so that I can stay away from them or that I can be aware and not put myself in danger even if I do have to interact with them on a regular basis. I don't know if that makes sense, but 
That's kind of why I started watching her content. Now, the reason why I didn't realize how problematic she was is because I think I just mostly didn't watch her worst videos. Like I mentioned, she kept, when I first subscribed to her, she kept like um, announcing that she was going to do the Eagle Week, that she was going to teach you how to cheat, how to manipulate. Well, I don't want to learn how to do those things, so I just didn't watch those videos. I didn't really think twice about it. She's this, you know, kind of a crazy person. Most of her videos, I get the feeling that it's like, it's like when a train wreck is happening and you just have to keep watching. That's kind of how the place that she occupies in my mind. I just kind of watch this person go to all kinds of crazy levels and then I go on about my life. So I didn't watch the Evil Week videos. I never watched her old videos because, I mean, now that this is all coming up out to the light, you can tell that she's been on YouTube for eight years. She has like 550 something videos on her channel. I obviously did not watch every single one of her videos. Well, it turns out a lot of her old videos are very racist. If I had watched her, uh, her old videos that had racist commentary, I would have never watched any more of her videos. But because those never hit my feed and I never went by to look at her channel, like, I just, I had no idea. And she has not made racist remarks um, other than like her BTS video, which I think is more recent. And again, I didn't click on that channel because I'm not interested in BTS. I'm 31. The last time I watched the, a boy band was like the Backstreet Boys when I was 12. Or the Backstreet Boys like a few years ago when they came back and I wanted to check out what, what they sound like now. Like, I, why would I sit there and watch a BTS video? So I never heard her say all those like racist remarks about how Asian men should stick to looking Asian and stuff like that. And now that this is all coming out to light, I saw on Twitter there's pictures of her with like MAGA stickers. And obviously if you can tell from my accent, I'm an immigrant. That's a very personal issue to me. If I would have heard those comments, if I would have seen those pictures, immediately I would have never even thought about it twice. I would not support her channel. But those things never came to my attention. And that's not an excuse, I'm just explaining how you could continue to watch her stuff even though she's that problematic. Okay guys, sorry there's like a drop in quality in the video, I had to change my camera to my iPhone because long story short, my batteries on my DSLR are dying and I'm waiting for the new ones to arrive in the mail. So where was I? That's a quick summary of basically of why I watch her videos to begin with and how you could go on not realizing that her problem that her content is problematic in regards to the commentary about mental health that kind of started like making me pause when i was watching her videos very recently it's only been till very recently that she has kind of upped the ante with her like uh shock value of how she um comments about celebrities mental health and like, I'm gonna be honest, in the last few videos, I did do like a double take because I tend to kind of like be working and have YouTube in the background. And I was like, what? What did she just say? But again, I categorize her as like this kind of, I don't want to say crazy because while we're talking about mental health, that's not a helpful word to use. I just, she's kind of a person like, you know, you know, some people have more out there personalities and, um, so I kind of put her in that category. Yeah, she's very out there. She's very outspoken. Like, of course, she's going to say some kind of a odd comment here and there, very unapologetically, like that is who she is. And again, I just never really thought about it too deeply. And I mean, like I said, I'm 31. Can you imagine most people that are watching her, if they're 14, 15, even 18, 20, 21, 24, they're probably not thinking about it for too long either. They're probably just watching for the entertainment, take whatever little advice they can get, and move on with their life. And while this whole entire conversation has been happening with video after video, like I said, I've been kind of been watching horrified because I feel really stupid. Like, I'm not, I think I'm intelligent. Like, how could I not point out all of these incons inconsistencies and all these, like, just rude... Um, messages really and I think it really comes down to um, you're gonna recognize things that affect you and while I've had problems with mental health in regards to anxiety and depression I've never been 
suicidal, for example. So when she made those comments about Pete Davidson um, wanting attention, or I forget what the words that she used. She said, "Oh, she's doing it for he's doing it for revenge and for attention." Um, I just thought, okay, there's another crazy statement by her. But it wasn't until I saw D'Angelo Wallace's videos that I saw, like, wow, like how somebody else that does experience harder or more difficult mental health problems to deal with would be triggered by messages like that or um, just by telling somebody that who who asked you to tell me your problems I that never really crossed my mind because it's like I said it's never been an issue for me whereas like I said earlier if I had heard her racist comments that has been an issue for me even though I look white I have still experienced both people being racist against me and people tell me racist comments because they think I'm white and they think I'm gonna side with them in their racist behavior. So right, something that I have more experience with would have raised a red flag right away and I would have recognized it and known that I feel uncomfortable. But because I never, I had never experienced that about mental health, um, you know, not about suicidal thoughts and stuff like that, it was harder to recognize and I think that's why a lot of the reviewers are having that difficulty because a lot of reviewers are probably intelligent and want to do better for themselves which is why we watch her channel the beautiful thing about her channel is that she learned she helped you learn by looking at other people and their mistakes and learning from them because I fully believe that you don't have to experience every single mistake to be a better person um, and this is why I make my YouTube channel about self-help and empowering yourself because we all have that ability to learn and be better and that's why I watched her videos but I think they just got progressively more and more problematic um, as you know everyone's been discussing already but the reason I wanted to make this video is because it really got me thinking about something that I never really thought about which is where does self-help end and psychology begin and to you that might sound like a Sorry, I keep looking down. My notes are down because I want to stay on topic. Well, that well, to you, that might sound like a stupid thing. It's not something that I ever thought about. When I read a lot of self-help books, not all of them are written by psychologists. And a lot of them have valid advice. So that's why when you go on YouTube and you look for self-help videos, if anybody thinks like me, they're probably not thinking too long about it. And... When you go on YouTube and you look at channels made by psychologists, um, now that everybody's pointing it out, yeah, every psychologist goes out of their way to say, look, I cannot diagnose you, this is not a diagnosis, they never diagnose other people, even channels that say, does this person fit this profile, they always make the disclaimer, look, this is just for entertainment, I cannot diagnose anybody without treating them. But again, if I'm 31 and I'm having a hard time with not even just realizing that there's a difference there, that maybe this person that isn't a psychologist shouldn't be talking about narcissism and psychopathy and borderline disorder, personality disorder, um, neither am I a 14-year-old, 18-year-old, etc., etc. This whole conversation had actually led me to realize that I think there's just been a normalization within the T channels and gossip YouTube, uh, sorry, the T channels on, on YouTube and gossip websites on Google in general. There's been a normalization of this diagnosing of celebrities. And you can really see this when it comes to Meghan Markle. A lot of people brought up the issue of Meghan Markle and Shalom Lester saying that she's a narcissist, this and that. The reason I think that Shallon thought she could get away with this is because if you look through YouTube and you just type Meghan Markle T, I can assure you that about 99% of all T channels focus on diagnosing Meghan Markle as a narcissist and pointing out why her behavior is narcissistic and why and how you can look at narcissists and how they operate and how her relationship with Harry and their dynamic is one of narcissists and victim and so I think that we're writing calling out Shalyn Lester for diagnosing celebrities as narcissists and stuff like that but I don't think she's the only one and I think there's been a normalization of that especially surrounding Meghan Markle 
I think the only difference with Shell and Lester is that she just carried out this phenomenon with every single other celebrity that she's interested in discussing in her channel. So if I could put myself in Shell and Lester's shoes, she's probably thinking, why is it wrong for me to talk about Meghan Markle being a narcissist and Pete Davidson having borderline personality disorder when all of these other T channels are doing it as well. And it's not just the T channels. Go on Google and type Meghan Markle narcissist and uh, there's gonna be millions of hits and I say this because I had no idea who Meghan Markle was and the reason why I started watching some tea channels was because I wanted to understand why the hell these people are talking about Meghan Markle and why are they all saying that she's a narcissist and so yeah I don't mean to defend Shallon but I think this points to a larger issue going on right now with celebrity gossip and tea channels in general and on an and on a similar note, the reason why people trust Shallon despite her not having receipts or sources is because there's also, I think, um, from my point of view, also a normalization of within the gossip, celebrity gossip subculture, there's been a big influx of like blind items. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you guys like are old enough to remember like Perez Hilton. He used to be like a big gossip, you know, celebrity gossip. Um, personality. Well, those personalities have gotten a lot of backlash. And even Perez Hilton had to like reinvent his own blog because he was getting so much hate about why are you being so hateful to celebrities. So I think because of that and because um, now that there's more independent creators trying to protect themselves, there's a lot of gossip um, blogs that deal with blind items. And if you've never heard of this, is when you say, well, celebrity A went to the store and made out with Celebrity C's husband and the, the girl at the store told me that they did a little, bit, a little bit more than just kiss in the dressing room. And if you post something like this, you're freeing yourself from legal um, backlash, right? You can't get sued because you're not alleging anybody um, did anything. You leave it up to the commenters to guess who's saying, who did all these things. Um, and that's a big phenomenon that I've noticed and one of the biggest um, gossip blogs online is called Crazy Days and Nights and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because all the times that Shallon Lester would say oh I have sources about this and that okay I'm, I'm gonna make a confession I read Crazy Days and Nights every once in a while when I'm, uh, when I'm bored <laughs> and um, Crazy Days and Nights is a, one of the biggest blind item blogs um, about Hollywood going on right now and it's been on the web for like a decade now and throughout the years many of the blind items that this blog has posted have been proven right so while we cannot prove that every single one of the posts that they make on that website is right a lot of people tend to see this blog as like being right about their information i'm not saying that's correct I'm just saying, you know, people build a reputation and their reputation of crazy days and nights and the guy that writes this anonymously, anti lawyer, he has like a strong reputation among people that read celebrity gossip. He, for example, was the first person to like out, I mean out but behind blind items that Harvey Weinstein was a, a sexual predator. He was the first one to make comments about Dan Schneider allegedly being also a sexual predator um, with his Nickelodeon actors and many many blind items that have been proven right throughout the years that I just don't have the patience to go back and look through um, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because most of Shannon Lester's narratives 100% align with anti lawyers narratives on crazy days and nights so the moment I, I literally any time that she would make a video and say my sources are saying this and that. If I had read Crazy Days and Nights that week, literally the same narrative would apply to whatever blinds were posted that week. And more often than not, they would align. So in my mind, I was like, oh, she got that from NT Lawyer. Like, even if she no longer works at Star Magazine, even if she's no longer getting all this, like, tea about celebrities or whatever, She's probably just reading Anti Lawyer, and a lot of people think Anti Lawyer in Crazy Days and Nights is like somewhat of a valid source. You know, as much of a blind gossip blog can be valid. So that's why 
I'm not saying everybody thought the same thing, but I'm just saying why somebody could possibly believe her when she says, you know what, it's just my anonymous sources. And even in a world where we now have all these tea channels coming out with receipts and stuff like that, um, I wouldn't be surprised if her audience has a large range in ages and you just, you're used to knowing that gossip people are not going to give up their sources, otherwise they no longer have a source. The whole receipts thing culture is new. That's like, that's a social media phenomenon. We have receipts because you can take a screenshot on, on your computer. You're not going to take a screenshot if somebody comes whisper something in your ear. So that's why when she says she has no sources, why I'm, I and other people are inclined to kind of believe her. Now, the more and more you watch her content, the more and more outrageous her own stories of her own life become. She said rappers have written songs about her. She's dated pro athletes. She says that she, you know, Harry Styles kissed her, blah, blah, blah. Like once you start listing all the crazy stuff she's saying, you get the idea that she's probably not, uh, you know, trustworthy as a narrator, as a, as a source of information. Um, and as a result, probably not all of her other like gossip either. But like I said, it's not until you kind of literally compile this list of things that she has said throughout the months and weeks that you've been watching her, when you realize like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, you're right, actually. She's kind of like really out there and probably not saying the truth most of the time. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of explain why all of these things are kind of happening within her audience. And especially, um, I've seen a lot of the videos that males are making about this channel and a lot of them say how could they think that this is a strong woman how could other women and young girls watch her and think that she's strong and to me my perspective is um the reason why so many of us thought she was a strong woman and that she was like empowering us is because she is very unapologetic about exerting your boundaries going after the, after the things that you want in life taking care of yourself being competitive being aggressive as a in the world as in like enforcing your boundaries um and this is something that i don't i don't mean at all to play like the gender card at all but if you are a guy you will not be you will not understand that women are not told any of these things this is being empower like empowering women is a completely new phenomenon in our society unfortunately me being 31 i didn't hear empowering things that can potentially be seen as masculine until very recently and so when a woman comes out and tells you yeah you can be strong yeah you can be competitive be aggressive if you want to cheat on that guy cheat on that guy i'm not saying that's right i'm just saying those things sound very empowering, especially when they come from another woman because they're not the usual narrative that you hear as a girl. Um, and, be, and if you have grown up as a, or identify yourself as male, um, I don't want to insult anybody or like be insensitive um, in regards to like gender ID identification, um, as, a, as a man, you are encouraged to be competitive, go after what you want. Who cares if, if other people um, miss out on whatever you're after, you're going after. Um, you're going to be encouraged to behave in those ways. But as a woman, you're always encouraged to diminish yourself and to just be subservient to other people. And like I said, this is changing. Thankfully, in society, it's changing. We have more and more people that are empowering women, empowering women. To connect with their masculinity, empowering men to connect with their femininity and everybody in between to be a full spectrum of the people that we are because there is no right or wrong, right? As long as you're not hurting other people. Now, very recently, I did start noticing some um, red flags here and there, um, which is why when all these videos started to come out, it was like, of course, like, I was already, I was already kind of like on that trail of starting to notice little weird things here and there. The first thing that I noticed is that she started talking more and more about how she hired somebody to do the research so that she could just know what to talk about in her video that day. And this really bothered me because number one, she would often like forget to edit her videos and you could see her just like 
for sometimes minutes of just dead silence basically just googling or reading whatever is on her ipad and not only did that bother me as a viewer as like you know i'm not entertained while you're scrolling through your ipad but it also made me feel like if you don't even know what you're talking about then why are you even talking about it um and i mean obviously i know what she wants to do is she just wants to capitalize on the trend and get views and therefore money and so that started to rub me the wrong way and the other thing that rubbed me the wrong way was that not only did she start making daily videos when everybody went into quarantine um and again like kind of profiting off the fact that everybody is at home because there's a whole worldwide pandemic going on but she literally her first video when like the quarantine was like a national thing basically her first video was about you know how to survive a, a, a lockdown or like how to like stock up on supplies i forget what the title of her video was but she kept saying that because she's a survivalist and she had been she was basically she basically was scarred by 9-11 and she would hoard all kind of like um, survival things in her office and at home but which is I, I totally understand we all um, respond to trauma in different ways and 9-11 if you lived in New York that is huge I mean 9-11 is a huge trauma period I can't even imagine what you felt if you lived in New York at the time but what bothered me about her video was that she kept like referring to the coronavirus as her own personal Super Bowl because people had laughed at her in the past for basically you know hoarding supplies um, for in case of a disaster and that now that there's a worldwide disaster this is her own personal Super Bowl her own personal Super Bowl so that really bothered me I just thought it was like insensitive and again I just kind of like brushed aside my own this distaste for it um, but looking back it's just um, it, she is just a, a complete reflection of who she is which is somebody who's very problematic and just like out of touch with like sensitive subjects and how they affect other people but yeah anyway in conclusion after watching all these videos I can no longer support her because for me the deal breaker was the moment I saw her making a joke about how well at least she didn't have immigrant parents that were gonna get picked up by ICE which is like how could you even joke about that like um, ICE are literally killing people at the border and what in what I consider to be genocide and I get told a lot of times that oh ICE and what's happening at the border is not genocide because only because the number of people killed does not compare to the Holocaust but I don't really care about the numbers I 100% think that if you're killing Latin American people systematically that is genocide but whatever but my point being it's it's not it's something serious that's not something that you joke about and like why would you even joke about somebody's parents being immigrants like that's just like ignorance like every single unless you're 100% Native American then you have some kind of immigrant in your blood or, or you're here thanks to somebody in your ancestry being an immigrant this is why I hate like MAGA and Trump supporters like you, you have nothing to talk about like are you a Native American? white supremacists are not Native American because oddly enough they would probably be against, racist against Native Americans and they're the ones that are Native to the whatever <laughs> this, is not the, this is not the video to discuss that subject but that for me again was that personal issue that brings me into like oh what did you just say like um and again i didn't see that until very recently when everybody started making um really examining her her old content basically but yeah i guess the point of my video was um if you're like me and you have watched her videos um, I know that when somebody has a completely different perspective on your perspective it feels very dumb to just like give your perspective up and be like you know what I was wrong and I'm gonna 100% go with what you're saying most people are not gonna do that because it makes you feel like then you have no integrity and you have no uh, loyalty to who you are and it's like if if this person can convince you of a sub of, to change your mind of a subject 
then anybody can convince you about anything and you have no character you have like I said no you have no integrity so I know why it might be so difficult for her viewers to accept that they're watching somebody who's not worthy of supporting because it's not the fact that you're just watching a video on YouTube it's like your view equates to money and supporting a platform that perpetuates racist uh, insensitive problematic toxic messages and mostly I'm gonna assume to younger women and men and everyone in between <laughs> um, so it's just not all right it's like I don't disagree with the fact that Shallon should be able to pay her rent and should have a source of income um, I just don't think she should be on a platform like YouTube where like you can't really police who's gonna watch her like I mean a little kid can click on a YouTube video and start watching her her weird ass videos and that's just not okay and like for me it really clicked when like I, I started watching all these videos and I realized like if I haven't realized these things and I'm 31 and I like to think like I said that I'm intelligent and that I think deeply about stuff and I haven't even realized how problematic she is how could a younger person and um, like I said, once I saw that she's racist and that she's a full-on like Trump supporter, there's pictures of her with MAGA stickers. Um, I'm just, I'm just honestly disgusted that I ever gave her a single view, that I even like mentioned her in one of my videos. And like I said, that's the main reason why I wanted to make this video because if anybody in the future is gonna watch my video, I'm gonna. Um, think that I'm supporting this person like I want them to know that hell no I'm not supporting this person um, and the only reason I mentioned her in my videos because I had no idea the depth of like her toxic behavior basically but yeah anyways thank you for watching if you still are um, if like I said if you're a subscriber to her please consider not supporting her anymore there are websites that will allow you to watch her videos without giving her the view on YouTube so you might want to consider that um, I don't know if that's like shady or not but like like I said it's not an issue of like oh don't give her money it's like she has a platform in which she perpetuates toxic ideology I just I don't think that people should be given any platforms um, especially like in a time like this where like we're just, like I said, we're just fighting to like understand which news sources are honest and which are not, um, let alone every single other source on the internet. So that's it for this video. I think it was a little longer than I intended. Thank you. I'm stuck again. I'm sorry if the quality um, of the camera halfway through the video was crappy or uh, or whatever if I'm sweaty it's really hot in LA if my lighting is not perfect I'm not gonna put on lights because it's it's so hot in LA okay <laughs> so anyway if you're a first time viewer of my channel I would encourage you to please watch my other videos because I don't want you to like walk away thinking that this is the kind of video that I make because while I do think that commentary channels have um, a purpose in YouTube and I've watched commentary um, channels from the beginning of time of like YouTube time I don't know if you guys like all you guys are old enough to be back to be on YouTube when it first started I remember there was like YouTube watchdog that was the first like kind of commentary channel that I can remember that he would like out people that were using like bots for views or subscribers and I always thought that was a valid necessary kind of service for the community and it's no different today but it's just changed we're not so concerned about bots and in terms of using subscribers because youtube can quickly go after those we're more concerned now with the content of the video that the videos that thrive on youtube and the the creators that are allowed to have a big platform on youtube so anyway like i said thank you for watching if you still are um subscribe if you like, if you like um to continue talking about issues of empowerment, self-help, things like that. Um, check out my other YouTube videos. Um, they're more usually more artistic. I put a lot more effort into my videos. Um, and yeah, and 
it's kind of funny the reason i want i also made this video is because i myself have been like kind of asking wait what is self-help versus psychology because i can't be advising people on their mental health i can only be advising them on like their personal growth and so there is a clear distinction there um and yeah that's that's another reason why i wanted to make this video because it is a valid reason it is a valid issue that somebody who's not a psychologist should not be making psychology videos on youtube but, um but yeah anyways like i said i want to end this video Thank you for watching. <laughs>